Hi everyone, today we are turbocharging the Miata. So let's go outside and pull it in so we can start pulling it apart. The collection of MX-5s that don't run is uh, growing every day. So, Matt, I think we need a word. Have you seen what this hooligan has done to our pristine vehicle? Look at the state of this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go grab all the parts that we're chucking on this absolute beast. So as James said, this is the power, the td 4 from Max Speeding Rods. 110 pounds worth of pure excellence. Let's go and grab the manifold and the exhaust. The manifold and downpipe. So what's left? I guess uh, we just need, we need an intercooler, uh, which we might have one on the shelf. There's one. Oh my god, this thing is a shed. Have you seen underneath the bonnet? Go down there. So now we're about to start turbocharging the beast. I've heard some mixed reviews of these turbos. Some say they last for five minutes. Other people say they're absolutely wicked. So we're going to find out for you guys. We know that these are wicked. So I'm just going to get to smashing this on. What is annoying is that there's a bloody steering shaft in a way. I don't know who put that there. So that's the exhaust manifold off now. I'm going to reuse that gasket because they're multi-layer steel anyway. Should be all right. Let's chuck the manifold on it and see how that looks. So as you can see, uh, we have got a few studs that need the nuts winding off. They're a little bit corroded and I was just gunning them out like an absolute animal. So now I'm going to show you how to get this nut off of this stud, which I've just pulled out of the manifold. So really, it's going to be easiest if you have a vice to do this. Yeah, I'm going to use two, two of the nuts from the manifold, which did come off okay. I'm going to thread, thread those on. There you go, so I've threaded that on enough so I can now get my other nut on. So I've tightened both those nuts up together and they're now locked together, at which point I should be able to simply wind that whole, you can see, that whole stud is now winding out. Now before I get too far, I'm just gonna unlock these again. There you go. So, there we go, and that is all of our studs and all of our nuts Perfect. all off that we needed to get off i better put matt's tool back otherwise he'll kill me thanks matt so i'm just about to install the lambda sensor or the wideband oxygen sensor that james lovingly installed in the old manifold so it's about to put it in the new downpipe but so we can tell how much fuel the uh, miata is using Looked like it was very, very rich. Cool. So we've just put the turbo on with one bolt for now, just so we can see where everything's going to line up. 
I am going to have to clock this to make it come out right where we want it to. However, the downpipe at the minute is looking pretty good. So now that we've got the downpipe on there, we know that that fits, it is time to clock this turbo. We want the turbo to face straight down because that's the way that the majority of our turbo intercooler kits already run. And hopefully that means we can reuse some of the parts that we already have. So I'm now going to set about separating all the parts of this turbo so that we can twist the compressor housing round and clock it to the angle that we need. There we go. So that is our CHRA separated from our compressor housing and our turbine housing. So on here, there's a little hole which there is a locating pin for. However, that actually appears to be completely missing from both sides of our housing. There are no pins at all actually, which makes our life super easy. That means that we're just gonna be able to clock this without uh, re-drilling anything at all so happy days so when this goes in our CRH uh, our compressor housing is going to be facing straight down and we need to make sure that our oil drain also faces straight down so all we're going to do is line those roughly up together and then pop that circuit back in and then what we'll do is we'll take our uh, take our turbine housing and we will uh, be able to clock this when it's on the actual car to make sure it all goes back into the right place. We'll be able to t rotate that on the manifold. Uh, I think it will go something like that to be honest. But we, let's just, uh, I guess let's mock it up on the car. So this is our oil drain. So, our, so the oil it enters from the top and drains out the bottom. Uh, and here's the water feed but so here's our oil drain and we want that to face straight down there is a space down straight down there where we should be able to route our uh, charge pipe that to me looks like that wants to go exactly there just like that so that is now one clocked compressor so the thing we need to bear in mind with uh, with this is just to make sure that any of the fittings that we've got that we've got aren't going to interfere with it because that would be a real pain. So we need an intercooler, and I know a car that has got one. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> So I've just finished installing the intercooler into this, which we robbed out of Matt's car. Now it's time to cut up the air down to make sure that we can get the intercooler pipes on. So let's get to it. Pow, one side done. So that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow. I need to finish up the oil feed and the water lines. I also need to drill for the oil drain. So there's probably another couple of hours working it in total, but we were getting there. So all the intercooler is in, the radiator's back in. We'll see you tomorrow for hopefully some more burnouts. So we're back again today and it is time to start fitting all the oil and water lines so we can actually make some boost. So we're going to prime the oil line for the turbo. I'm not sure whether it's probably worth it for a 110 pound turbo, but uh, I think in terms of uh, best practices that we will do. So I've just found out that there are two different holes in the same area which this can be threaded into, except it can't because the thread is completely different and I have completely ruined it. So we were cranking it up over trying to get some uh, oil to come out of the oil line to feed the turbo and oil was spewing all over the floor. So that's a top tip that one. Make sure that you get it in the right hole. So I'm now gonna go change this fitting out for the correct one and uh, try again. Um. Yeah, stop. 
So we've just finished fitting up the oil bead line and it's now time to do the water lines, which are much easier. Hopefully won't get fluids everywhere this time. Now that the fitting is in the sump, the final piece of the puzzle is to fit this oil drain hose. So everything's together. I went to start it, no oil pressure. When I was tapping that sump, it looked like I'd just nicked the pickup tube. However, James pointed out that I'd actually forgotten to reconnect the oil pressure sensor. So we've just connected it back up, started it, and we again, we have oil pressure. So I've got off really luckily there. So let's start it up. Yes! Oh yeah! There we go! Excellent! Mega well happy with that! We have a couple more jobs to finish off now. I need to fabric cobble a way to get the wastegate actuator on. I can attach it with one bolt, so we'll see if that works or not. Uh, we need to reattach the exhaust, as you heard, chuck some coolant in it, and do some burnouts. So now that we've just put the Miata back together, Dan's had a look at the map. The map that came on the Speed you know, was actually just an NA map, so it was definitely not ready for boost at all. We've rescaled that for boost. We've put the only injectors that we have, which were some light purples out of some VVT engines, put those in, which are about 40cc bigger each, and set base timing. So we're now about to go rip it outside. We'll see how we get on. There probably won't be enough fuel to cope with what we're about to do, but hey, that's what we're here to find out. So. Let's uh, start her up. Wrong side. Oh no, it's popped the rad. Has it popped the rad? Oh, it has. Hey! Come, Maleo. The back has Thanks very much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Tell us down in the comments below what turbo kit you're running and what power you're making. And subscribe to us for more Mazda MX-5 content every single week. See you next time. Ice cream time. Oh, I haven't got any money. I haven't got any cash. Oh, gutted. No cash, Jake. Oh, yes. Let's go. Who wants ice creams? <laughs>